Metal Jesus here and I am back again and today we are talking about PlayStation 3 Hidden Gems. start this off with Nier. This was a game made by the same people who also made Bullet Witch. Does anybody else remember that? What I like about this game is that it attempts to do something kind of new and inventive in the action RPG genre. For instance, it mixes up a bunch of different gameplay elements into one solid experience. It has elements of 2D platforming. There's also bullet hell style dodging going on here. There's a fishing and farming simulation and much, much more. Now, first impressions of this game may not be that great because, you know, you start off playing this tough guy with a huge heart and eternal love for his sick daughter. I mean, initially the story is not that great, but in fact, most of the characters are really rich with backstory and actually are very likable. But more than that, when you get into the game at about say 50 or 75%, the story takes some really interesting turns and frankly, it starts to blow your mind. I also enjoy the combat in this game. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Dynasty Warriors, which involves a lot of melee, but it's good because it mixes in 10 different weapon types as well as a bunch of different spells. It should also be noted that this game has just a fantastic soundtrack, certainly one of the best of this generation. And a lot of people think it's one of the best soundtracks of all time. It's a real shame that the Yakuza series never quite caught on in North America because outside of the US, this series is huge. On the PS3, we actually got a couple of Yakuza games. Now I'm gonna talk about the fourth one because that's one of my favorites, but basically this is the equivalent of the Grand Theft Auto series, but in Japan. In this game, you play as four different characters. You play as a loan shark, you also play as a prisoner, and then you'll spend time as a cop, and of course as Kazuma, the main character of the previous three Yakuza games. And just like in Grand Theft Auto, you spend a lot of time kind of doing whatever the heck you want. Now there is a main story, obviously, but you can also wander around Tokyo's red light district, taking on quests, you can get into street fights, but also have fun doing things like gambling, you bowl in this game, you'll play rounds of mini golf, you'll also play in arcades, I mean, it's actually pretty cool, and yes, you even get to sing karaoke. Now, obviously it's really hard to sum up a game like this in just a couple minutes. And so I, I can't really do that very well, but obviously there's a huge story here. There's a ton of backstory for you to just dive into and really get involved with. And to help people get up to speed who maybe haven't played the previous games, this also includes on the disc, a bunch of recap videos of the first three games and they're, they're quite in depth. So I actually enjoyed watching those and sort of going, oh yeah, okay, that's what happened in the second one. Aquapaza is a 2D fighting crossover that brings together characters from various adult Japanese visual novels. Now, I don't claim to be familiar with the source material here. I mean, I don't read a lot of Japanese visual novels, but it, this is a really solid 2D fighter and it kind of reminds me of Street Fighter a bit because it tends to be a little bit slower. It's not quite as, as frantic as some of the others. Obviously this game looks really good. It's very crisp and clean and it's, it's well animated. Actually, this is just such a beautiful fighting game. But what makes it stand out for me is its emotion system. And basically what this is, is that it rewards aggressive play. And basically it will punish you if you're too defensive all the time. And how it does that is by decreasing your attack and defense over time. So if you just huddle in the corner and you're constantly blocking, well, you're gonna lose. But the opposite is also true. If you play more aggressively, then your attacks and defenses will go up. And so the game is a nice balance of defending and attacking and kind of riding that line. ski Snowmobile Challenge is the kind of game I love covering in these Hidden Gems video because it just, it just flies under the radar. This looks like a really cheap and cheesy game and it kind of is, but it's also really fun and that's what matters. For one thing, the tracks are nice and varied in this game. For instance, there's long, long tracks that take quite a while to get around, which, which are really fun. But then there's short ones where maybe the focus is on just doing tricks. 
Also, your vehicle feels like a snowmobile, so it's very slippery out there. And again, you have to kind of play this game like you're on that kind of vehicle, like you're really on a snowmobile. You can't play this game like you're driving a car because again, it's very slippery out. So it just feels really good. Now the graphics really aren't that exciting. I mean, you're not gonna get all pumped up about it. You're not gonna be blown away. And as a matter of fact, there are kind of some long load times. So, you know, it's definitely feels like a budget title in that regard. I was able to get this game for $4. $4! I mean, <laughs> That's an amazing value, and I put a ton of hours in this game. So, I don't know, if you're like me and you're looking for a good racing game on the cheap, definitely check it out. Dragon's Crown is a game made by a company called Vanillaware, and these guys are kind of the masters of really beautiful 2D platforming fighting games. As a matter of fact, they made another great game called Odin Sphere. Dragon's Crown is a side-scrolling beat-em-up where up to four players can battle together through levels, playing as different character classes. For instance, you've got wizards with magic, you have fighters with swords, elves with bow and arrows for distance attacks, and much, much more. I think what makes this game fun, besides just hanging out with your friends and beating people up, is that the combat is really varied depending on the class that you play. You have lots of different moves, blocks, and attacks, and things get hectic. But you know what? It's very satisfying to, to go through a level, beat a boss, and then get all that loot and get all that experience. Now, I think the only downside to this game, and it's a very minor thing, but it does come up, is that some of the characters, for whatever reason, they're very grotesque. They're very misshapen. And I know that's the art style they're going for, very stylized, but honestly, sometimes the characters are just really weird looking and not necessarily in a good way. That said, it's a very small nitpick. I actually think this game's really fun. The Bureau XCOM Declassified is a game that really surprised me. For gamers like me, XCOM sounds very familiar, and that's because we originally played the turn-based game back in DOS in like the mid-90s, and then they kind of rebooted it recently, and they created another game I played on iPad, which again was a 3D turn-based game, but then also they created the Bureau. So this, it, this exists in the same universe, but it's definitely its own game. What sets this game apart from the others in the series is that this is a third-person cover-based shooter that plays very similar to Mass Effect. This game takes place in the 1960s where a worldwide alien invasion has happened and it's up to the XCOM team to fight back and save the planet. You do this by controlling your main character plus the other squad mates during really intense battles with those aliens. Now, right off the bat, this game is gonna feel very familiar to fans who played through Mass Effect which is a good thing. However, there is one downside to this game and that is the brain dead AI of your companions. Frankly, it's terrible. I don't know what it is, but they can't keep themselves alive. They can't seem to get into cover. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it definitely can be very annoying. Now, the good news is you can set the difficulty to fairly easy and you don't have to necessarily, you know, babysit them as much, but you still do a lot of babysitting in this game. That said, I do highly recommend this game. I actually played quite a bit of it and I like it a lot. We're going in. Be ready on the evac. It's gonna be touch and go. On the way. Let's be honest here. Did you not think I was at some point going to cover one of the best heavy metal games of all time on my channel? I'm the Metal Jesus. It's finally happening. So what to say about Brutal Legend other than it is the epitome of a hidden gem. Unfortunately, this game did not sell very well, and it's a real shame because in many ways, it's, it's a lot of fun. Now, it's not a perfect game, but what it does, it does very well. At its core, it's an open world action adventure game where you go around as a roadie who is voiced by Jack Black, and he does a brilliant job here and you basically kick ass while listening to awesome heavy metal music. This game really is a love letter to heavy metal music. I know I keep talking about it, but it's true. It, it starts with the level design and the artwork. It looks like an old 70s or 80s heavy metal record sleeve. It just looks, it just looks amazing. It looks evil. It's so cool from beginning to end. 
But as if that's not enough, they also recruited a bunch of heavy metal gods to be in this video game and play themselves, or at least a version of themselves. For instance, Ozzy, who helps you upgrade your car as well as your battle axe. There's also Lemmy from Motorheads in this game. And what? who else is there? Oh, there's Rob Halford, there's Lita Ford, and so many more guest appearances. But really, the amazing soundtrack is the star of the show here. Let's be honest. I mean, there is over a hundred licensed songs in here covering every genre of heavy metal, including classic rock with Diamond Head, Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, Kiss, Scorpions, Def Leppard. You have some industrial music with Static X, Ministry. There's also hair metal like Motley Crue, Skid Row, Whitesnake. Then, then like thrash metal, Slayer, King Diamond, Man of War. Then you get into even newer bands, dark death metal stuff like Dark Tranquility, Three Inches of Blood. Man, it just goes on and on and on. Okay, see you later, Guardian of Metal. Don't be a stranger. Next up is Valkyria Chronicles. This is a tactical role-playing game set in a fictional country at war, where you control the characters turn by turn, carefully plotting out your next move. Right off the bat, this game kind of reminded me of maybe a mix of Skies of Arcadia meets old school Fallout, where you need to watch your command points or your action points to know just how far you can move, and then once you're there, whether you can expend energy to shoot at an enemy. What's cool about this game is that you don't have to worry about traditional tile movement that you typically do when playing these kind of turn-based games. Instead, you're free to move however you want in a 3D environment as long as you have those command points. I also really like the graphic style here, that sort of hand-painted, cell-shaded graphics. I mean, it's just beautiful. Also, the characters are really fun and very interesting. That said, this game is definitely challenging. <laughs> it kicked my ass many, many times, but there's something about a turn-based RPG that I just love and I kept coming back to it. This is a great game. I'm gonna be honest and admit that I kind of got burned out on Ridge Racer. I mean, this is back when it was on the N64 and the PlayStation, PlayStation 2. I played a ton of it on the PSP. And so honestly, when a new one comes around, I was like, eh. But to my surprise, Ridge Racer Unbounded is a surprisingly unique game in this franchise. So what's the deal with this game? Well, it is called Ridge Racer, but actually it feels more like a mix of, say, Motor Storm with a little bit of Split Second in there, maybe Burnout, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The reason why this game feels so different is because it was created by developer Bugbear, which also created the excellent Flat Out series. There's a much more kind of realistic, sort of gritty feel to this game, especially with the tracks and the cars. Also gone is the arcade drift feel of the traditional Ridge Racer game. Instead, you have a much more kind of realistic and organic drifting in this. However, I'll be honest and say that that realism comes at a cost because this game can be pretty tough, especially in the beginning when you're trying to figure out how the drifting works. When I first started playing this, man, I was turned around all the time. I was crashing. It was definitely more difficult, but once you get the hang of it, this game is really awesome. All right, guys. Well, that is part one of my PlayStation 3 Hidden Gems. And I've got a bunch more games that I'm gonna show, including hmm, a little preview here. 3D Dot Game Heroes could show up in the next one. But you know what? I'd love to know what you think should be in the second video. So let me know down in the comments below. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel and thank you very much for subscribing. Take care. If you like this Hidden Gems video, you might like all the others I have on my channel as well, including games for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 2, PSP, Game Boy Advance, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, and so much more. Definitely check them out.